All right, <clears throat> trying this again. All right, so there are two ways to, or uh, two easily supported ways of uh, getting monsters into Fabula Ultima. Way number one is you go to, um, actually, you run the debugger regardless, but way number one, you go to the properties, you debug, you go to launch profiles, and you have these three JSON files. So way number two is in these things. I'll cover them in a bit. But way number one is uh, you go directly to the SQLite file. And you go, or sorry, you uh, put in a file name, you put in a SQLite, a place where you want the SQLite file to be. You say create is true. And you say reload known skills to true. Um, you can have these be false, but if this is false, then you won't create the database. Um, and if this is false, then any changes you've made that have been made to known skills won't be true. So, um, but if you set these both to false, it should start up a little faster. Um, so, that, all right, and then you see. And, okay, so how do I get monsters? In um, it's pretty straightforward. Let's do it. Dread Moth. All right, so you have these different workflows. Um, so I'm using SQLite so that different beasts can share different attacks and spells. Um, and mainly it's actually for equipment and skills that we're doing this. Uh, if you go through this book, a lot of the basic attacks and a lot of the spells are actually specific to the monsters. They don't have a lot of overlap. But the equipment you'll see on humanoids is pretty overlapping. So we're going to do basic beast, call it Dread Moth. Uh, description a large carrion moth. It's sounds like a Level is five. Five, so we're going to then uh, its traits are creepy, flying, hairy, smelly. And here we're going to put in monster. Um, I don't have support for like pretty, or maybe I have fixed this, but I think if you do. Never mind. I, I do have support for that, apparently. All right, and then you're going to put in these dice sizes. So 10, 6, 8. Then you can put in a file, an image file name. This will show up in the game, but or in the actual GM creator, but or cool. But for now, we're just going to do this. And then we're going to go through these different values. So for a physical damage, put an empty, same for air and bolt and dark and earth. But it's vulnerable to fire, resistant to ice, nothing for light, resistant to Um, and then you would start putting in sheet stats. So you want to put in the values that you see here. Um, because these determine what kind of skills it has. Um, for example, mod is zero, zero. Uh, uh, override means it, if you didn't see this plus sign here, if you just saw like a hard number there, that's an override. No. Uh, it's initiative eight. No. Uh, a monster, so beast can't have equipment. It's the thing that happens. All right. The fight. Uh, doesn't have a, another attack, so no. Does it have spells? Yes. So put in poison cloud. 
And that uh, doesn't have another spell. This beast have other actions. Uh, nope. All right, so now we start putting in the attributes. So I think you still have to put in the full thing here. This damage type is physical. Not range. This range has a little. Oh, I know it changed. Uh, it's duration. Oh, sorry. Yeah, now we're creating the spell poison cloud. Its duration is instant. You can put it in whatever. Because this stuff is like inform. Um, affects the the way the game. Or sorry, the way the GM tool like presents the monsters and this stuff is just words that the GM says. So this. Um, so its target is up to three creatures. Its point cost is, I'd say 10. Technically, it's this whole thing, but I haven't ordered that yet. So, uh, its description each target suffers with specific status effect. Attributes are might and willpower, which I have to capitalize with. Offensive, yes, it's got this red. Yes. Moth bite, it's modifier, it's accuracy modifier, that's this number. It's 10. Damage modifier is zero. Whoops, I screwed up. Whatever, we'll continue. It'll have uh, some weird effects. Uh, so yeah, you see here, it's got improved hit point. These are the skills that are calculated based on those stats I indicated earlier. So you can add additional skills to this, which... Um, I think because I said that the accuracy mod is 10 and the damage mod Row. I think it's supposed to have boosted damage, but for now we're just gonna go with flying. No. See page seven for detailed effects of this skill. Flying, <laughs> and and I don't know. Scary. No. I'm gonna say if things are spread, targets have to save again. Not frightened. I'm going to say terror for now. That's not what it's called in the game, but that we're going to go wings, targets, save, terror. This is how, uh, this matters more for special attacks. This is how we find, um, special attacks, special attack skills in the database. Then we did that. So we're just going to type end. Um, and that's how you, that's the main way you're going to add monsters. But the next way you can do is, uh, I call them tapes. So if you use one of these, it'll instead um, simulate that input, all this input you just saw, um, and run that through. This is very nasty. I mainly have been using it for, um, Bugging purposes, um, because you can't run these more than once. Uh, but you can the of the two that you see here, the cact roll one has uh, little comments that you can use. So you see, you choose beast, beast name. So you can probably base your uh, your efforts on this, but. If you do something different, um, if you have more special attacks than the cact roll has, then you're you're gonna have to modify this file. 
But for debugging purposes, and if you're willing to just continuously delete the database for testing, it works out pretty well. Um, and that is it.